Hi, and welcome to the Storyteller's Cottage, where we bring literature to life. Today I'm going to show you how to host an epic, immersive masquerade ball inspired by the book The Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern. If you've landed here, you've probably already read the book, but if you haven't, and you should, I've included a link in the description so you can find it. The appeal of any masquerade party is the thrill of becoming someone else, the chance to try on a new persona and immerse yourself in an evening of dark and mysterious secrets and discoveries. The masquerade suggests an aura of mystery with a slight undercurrent of danger. Who might be hiding behind those masks? Anything can happen in a place where no one is bound by their conventional identity. A masquerade party can be themed in a variety of different ways, from a spooky Halloween affair to a historic Venetian soiree. But today we're going to create an immersive literary masquerade based on the party described in Aaron Morgenstern's intricate and fascinating novel, The Starless Sea. The book is set in a fantastical underground maze that is part refuge, part museum for stories and storytellers. Early in the story, the masquerade ball serves as the first step that the main character takes on his quest to find this underground sanctuary known as the Starless Sea. Author Erin Morgenstern is known for her talent in imagining and describing fantastical worlds, and the Starless Sea itself has been described as extravagantly imaginative and an ode to an aesthetic. So there's a lot of great source material for us to use as we build this mysterious literary hipster celebration. Today we'll be talking about the four things you'll need to plan your party. Decor, activities, food, and costuming. In the story, the main character, Zachary, attends a mysterious literary-themed masquerade ball in an elegant historic hotel. The dress code is formal, and most guests are dressed like a literary character or an author. The space is dark, but it's loud because there are a lot of guests trying to talk over the dance music. The evening's activities sort of swirl around Zachary because he's trying to solve a mystery, but he doesn't know exactly what he's looking for, and he doesn't know anyone there. So dark and drifting is your inspiration as you set up your decor. Many immersive events require specific decorative items to set the stage so guests know where they are, like Hogwarts banners or Eiffel Towers and berets. In the case of this party, however, you're getting off easy because the most evocative element will be darkness. Do a dry run for your setup at night and try turning off all your electric lights and using just candles, battery operated candles for your light. This will either work perfectly or be a complete disaster. So you'll want to know this ahead of time. Maybe you need to get more candles or you might need to set up some small table lamps for some extra light or use your dimmers for your overhead lights but you want to make sure people can actually still see. The atmosphere you're going for is curiously mysterious, not creepily petrifying. <laughs> Add some mysterious music and you're on your way. Now, the Starless Sea has been described as a love letter to stories and their power. So the next element of your decor will be books. Pile up books everywhere you can possibly fit them. And if you need more, head over to your local thrift shop and pick up some of those really nice old ones for a dollar a piece. Put them on tables and next to chairs and under the trays of food and even outside your front door. Put them in the bathroom. Everywhere your guests look, there will be a subconscious message that stories are all around us. Now you can start to add a few specific nods to the starless sea. These will be subtle because mystery is all about nuance and innuendo. In the story, the underground library is filled to overflowing with stories of all types, from huge paintings to stories written on strips of paper and folded into little stars. They're also inscribed onto skin, pressed onto rose petals, laid in tiles on the floor, carved into crystal and hung from chandeliers, sculpted out of wax, knit into wool, shaped into honeycomb by trained bees, and more. But right now, let's focus on the things that are actually accessible to us. Starting with paintings. You can actually pick up a few expressive looking paintings while you're at the thrift shop. This one cost me all of $5. 
place them around, and then you can focus on hiding a few more stories in plain sight. Grab a really old book that you don't mind ruining, and even an old encyclopedia will do, and cut out some pages to fold into stars. There's a link in the description if you don't know how to do this. The old pages can line a tray for drinks or cover your votive candle holders. You can make a paper chain out of book pages and tack it up like a garland around some of your more important doors. Doors figure prominently in this book, as you know. If you can get your hands on a typewriter, that can be the basis of a fantastic literary still life. Or you can use any other storytelling tools like pens, pencils, paintbrushes, in various containers to reference the creation of stories. Next, add a few hints at the three major icons that Zachary chases throughout the book. The key, the sword, and the bee. You should definitely include these images on your invitation to the party, and also on your front door. But in addition to the obvious graphics, you can also hide a few for your guests to find when they least expect it. Perhaps a few keys scattered around the glasses at the bar, or a sword on the soap in the bathroom. You can also add some understated and whimsical nods to the animals that are mentioned so often in the book. Specifically, the owls that come up and the cats that appear everywhere. This party is supposed to be at a hotel, so you're not trying to replicate the Starless Sea, but just to make your guests think about some of the other elements in the book, kind of like hidden Mickeys at Disney World. Grab a little souvenir figure or even a stuffed animal and just place it somewhere almost out of the way, but where guests will eventually see it and chuckle at the inside joke. If you want, you might even want to reference a few other elements that repeat during the story, like door handles, or the dollhouse, or even time. But don't feel like you have to go out of your way to buy anything special, and don't feel like you have to include all of these items. Just use what you already have and keep it subtle. Now we've come to the most fun and unexpected element of your decor. In the Starless Sea, Zachary is shocked to find an old book that includes a story about him in it, even though the book is clearly older than he is. You can print up a very short story about each of your guests and hide them around for them to find. See if you can get a hold of a photo of each of your guests, whether they're off your phone or their Facebook page. Then use a short story generator on the internet to whip up a little tale about each guest, type it up, add the photo, and print it on ivory paper so it looks like it came out of a book. Your guests will love finding these tucked into potted plants and folded around lamp bases. At the masquerade party described in the book, the guests are all dressed as characters from literature, and there's music, dancing, and cocktails with cool literary names. The two activities specifically mentioned are a woman typing up mini stories and handing them out to guests, and this very intriguing whispered storytelling in the dark. Since it takes a special kind of talent to create stories on the spot, you'll probably want to make up a few verses ahead of time and print them up and have someone pose as a writer and pretend to whip them out of a typewriter or a printer and just hand them cryptically to guests as they walk by. Now the whispered storytelling will be a complete sensation at this party. In the book, Zachary is pulled into a pitch black room and a mysterious figure whispers a fable into his ear while sporadically moving him around the room. When the story's over, he's propelled out a back door back into the party. You don't want to scare people, so I wouldn't recommend manhandling people into dark closets. <laughs> but you could have someone hand each guest, silently, one at a time, a cryptic message that says, please join the secret storyteller for an individual performance in the green room. Now, please. Expect complete darkness. You'll need to persuade a friend to play the role of the storyteller and have them read the description of the activity at the bottom of page 82 so they understand what they're trying to replicate. And you might even station a second friend outside the exit door of the activity to hand the guests a drink as they exit this dreamlike encounter. Now let's plan a few other activities along these same lines. Having several unusual things to do at a party helps people mingle and meet each other and feel like they've become a character in the story. As Zachary is famously the son of a fortune teller, having a friend tell fortunes is a perfect fit. Hide this person behind a mysterious door and mark it with a sign that says something like, do you dare? 
don't say what's behind the door, and don't forget to mark it with the bee, the key, and the sword. Guests who are brave enough to enter will find yet another dark candlelit space with your fortune teller seated at a table. If you know someone who can read tarot cards, that fits the mysterious profile of the night perfectly, but you can also type up some fortunes from the internet and have guests pull one from a bowl, and then the teller can make up some details to go along with it. See if you can find somebody who likes to improvise. Another fun activity that sort of mirrors the storytelling in the dark is a game where guests need to guess what they're touching without being able to see it. You can collect a few shoe boxes and cut holes in the side, then drape the whole thing in some kind of black velvet and set it on a table in a dark corner. Include items inside that were mentioned in the story, like doll furniture or doorknobs or an old fashioned key, a tiny sword, or maybe here's where your miniature owl ends up. Round up another friend to supervise this activity and let people know whether they've guessed correctly. And I'm sure you're getting the message now that you'll need a few extra hands to pull off this party. The events that run the smoothest have a lot of eyes on the activity. And that leads me to just one more activity that doesn't require a monitor, and that's a collective story journal. Start with a blank journal and begin a story on the first page. Write only one page, and then instead of stopping at the bottom, write your last line at the top of the next page. Display this journal on a table with a pen and a sign that says, please add a page to our story, but don't look at the page before yours. Please write your last line on the page after yours. Paper clip the pages on the left to drive home the no peeking rule. Each guest can come along and write one page of the story based off the line at the top of their page. At the end of the night, you can gather everyone together and read the whole thing by candlelight. Won't that be fun? Now, what will you serve at this party? We know Zachary likes retro cocktails. And in fact, that's all that's mentioned in the way of refreshment in the description of this party. He drinks something called a drowning Ophelia, made with gin and lemon and fennel syrup and served with a sprig of rosemary and a napkin with a Hamlet quote on it. There are also champagne glasses circulating with ribbons that say, drink me. Penguin Random House Books, the publisher of the Starless Sea, actually posted recipes for several of the cocktails mentioned in the book, and I'll include a link to that in the description as well. You can try some of these, or scour the internet for other fancy cocktail recipes, or make your favorites and just give them new literary names. Whatever direction you choose to go, print up little cards that list the name of each drink and its ingredients, and either make little table tents out of them or set them in plastic frames at your bar so guests know what they're drinking. Since this whole evening is dark and mysterious, you could potentially consider adding another layer of magic to your drinks with dry ice, which you can buy at Walmart or Costco. You do need to be careful with this though, because you can safely put dry ice into cocktails, but you can't drink it. It actually sinks to the bottom. There's a link in the description that explains everything. Now, what will you be feeding your guests to absorb all that alcohol? It should be something mysterious that isn't immediately obvious what kind of food it contains, such as little turnovers made of phyllo dough wrapped into triangles. They'll be perfectly starchy to balance off the drinks, and you can put any number of fillings inside. If you're from a Middle Eastern background, you may be familiar with baking Greek spanakopita or Armenian cheese bed eggs. There's a trick to working with phyllo dough, so if you haven't done it before, don't make this party your inaugural run. Bake these from scratch only if you know what you're doing. Otherwise, there are plenty of frozen savory turnovers in your grocery store freezer that you can use. You can also make an assortment of fancy toppings for slices of French bread, known as crostini. And you can layer up things like goat cheese, chopped marinated beets, an orange slice, and a piece of mint, or cream cheese, honey, and sea salt. I'll also include a link in the description to a great post about 50 easy crostini toppers from the Food Network. And now that we've mentioned honey, this item occurs frequently throughout this book and must be included somewhere in your drinks or food or both. Bee-shaped cookies are mentioned in the book, but you could also serve baklava, which is drenched in honey, or little cups with half a grilled peach or a canned pear, a scoop of mascarpone cheese, and a drizzle of honey. A great subtle nod to the story is a card describing the food signed the kitchen featuring a bee. 
Lastly, let's talk about the costumes for your masquerade. In the party Zachary attends, the rules are formal attire, literary costumes encouraged, masks required. Encourage your guests to dress up as their favorite literary character or even author. There are so many to choose from, and characters are generally easy to find clothes for. If you have guests who are worried that someone else has already chosen their favorite character, you can ask everyone to let you know who they're coming as so you can flag the duplicates. You may end up hosting Mirabelle with her pink hair and the Keeper with the pearls in his hair, or you might have a house full of Agatha Christie, Zelda Fitzgerald, Edgar Allan Poe, Sherlock Holmes, J.K. Rowling, and Jane Austen. Whoever attends, the mix of recognizable figures will add a lot of energy to the party. And since masks are required, and these are the ones for your eyes, not for your mouth, make sure to have a few extra on hand for people who forget theirs or just don't have any. Won't it be fun when we can have friends over again without worrying about getting sick? For now, we can dream and plan for the future. Kind of like gardeners order seeds and plan their spring gardens in the winter. Someday we'll all be together again. Now one last touch. On the inside of your front door, post a little card that says, this is not where the story ends. This is where the story begins. When your guests leave, this will be the last thing they see. And that's all you need to plan an epic, immersive masquerade ball inspired by the Starless Sea. Good luck, have a fantastic time, and let me know in the comments how it went, especially if you added something that I haven't mentioned here. Thanks for watching. Thank you.